All right, we're finishing out the next section of empirical formulas, and this is going to be completing empirical formulas using combustion analysis. It has the same steps in the end, where you're converting to moles, dividing by the smallest number of moles, and then creating a ratio. But getting to that point takes a little bit more effort. Um, so take a second to read exercise three. All right, we have, in this particular case, we have a compound with carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. We're told that we have 0 0.255 grams of this isopropyl alcohol car, um, substance. And we're also told that we produce 0 0.561 grams of CO2 and 0 0.306 grams of H2O. Since our substance has carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in it, we need to take those apart, figure out how much carbon, figure out how much hydrogen, and then figure out how much oxygen. All right, so the way we do this is to figure out the carbon, we have to get the carbon out of the CO2. So for us to do that, we first have to convert it into moles. And so I'm going to use the molar mass of CO2 all right and then I care only about the carbon in this compound so then I have one mole of CO2 contains one mole of carbon and then because this compound has oxygen in it also and I know it does I'm also going to find out the grams of carbon. So I'm going to use the molar mass to do that. So if I didn't have oxygen, I could just find moles of carbon and move on. Since I do, I'm going to get both. And I have 0 0.0127 moles of carbon and 0 0.153 grams of carbon. I need to do the same thing for the hydrogen. Only this time I care about the hydrogen out of the water. So again, I'm going to use molar mass, 18.02 grams per one mole of water. One mole of water contains two moles worth of hydrogen. And then again, because I know I have oxygen in here, and that's a trick that I've just kind of learned, one mole of hydrogen contains 1.01 grams of hydrogen. So I multiply across the top, divide by the bottom, and I'm going to do it once without the molar mass at the end, and then once with the molar mass at the end so I can get both values. So I get 0 0.0339 moles of uh, hydrogen and 0 0.0343, paper is moving, grams of hydrogen. All right, so I know when we're doing empirical formula, the first thing we want to get is moles. Um, but the last component of our system is oxygen. And when you burn something, it requires oxygen also. So in your CO2 and your H2O that you formed, some of the oxygen will have come from the isopropyl alcohol that we care about, and some of the oxygen will have come from the O2 that it was burned with, because the general equation would be CxHyOz, we'll say that for the, the hydrocarbon, plus O2, yields CO2 and water. So we have oxygen coming from two places. We have to separate it. The way that we separate it is by comparing the total mass of our sample and then subtracting the mass of the carbon and the hydrogen, and then everything that's left better be the oxygen. So that's the original mass of the sample. 
we found that we used 0.153 grams of the carbon and 0.0343 grams of the hydrogen. That was the C, that was the H, so then I subtract the two of them and I get 0 0.0676 grams of oxygen. So again, with my empirical formulas, I need moles. So I'm going to take that mass of oxygen, and I'm going to divide it by its molar mass, or use dimensional analysis to get to moles of oxygen. Okay. And that gives me 0 0.00423 moles of oxygen. So now I have all of my moles. I have moles of O. I have moles of H. And I have moles of C. So the next step that I need to deal with is I need to divide them all by whichever has the smallest number of moles to make the most reduced ratio. In this case, that's going to be the oxygen. So I'll have 0.0127 moles of C divided by 0 0.00423. And then for the hydrogen, it was 0 0.0339 moles divided by 0 0.00423. And then for the oxygen, of course, it will be a ratio of 1 but it certainly never hurts to show your work. Okay, so what I end up with then is when I divide these values out, I get 3 for the carbon, 8 for the hydrogen, and of course 1 for the oxygen. So then my formula becomes C3H8O. All right, so walk through that again if you need to. There are several practice problems in the book, um, and come see me if you need help.